Recording in progress. Good afternoon, Hope Church, and welcome, everyone. We're so happy that you're all able to join us today in person as well as uh, online, if you are. Let's all stand together. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. For certainly, he is worthy of all our praise. This is the call to worship from Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, you his servants. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. So God, we come into your presence, Lord, and we indeed agree with the psalmist that you are worthy to be praised. Indeed, you are to be praised, not just the, for the next hour and a half, but Lord, every minute, every second of our lives, would you be glorified? We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Confession of our faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All who third and see, all who are we, we come to the fountain to be hard in the streams of life, the pain and sorrow be washed away, the ways of his mercy. Even cries out to thee. All who are, all who thirsty, know who are. To the fountain, to be hard in the streams of life, the pain and the sorrow be washed away. Thank you, Lord. The waves of His mercy as He cries down to deep and come, Lord. into our hearts come Lord Jesus come Holy Spirit Holy light you into our minds and Holy Spirit come all who thirsty to the fountain to be hard in the streams of life the pain and the sorrow be washed away the ways of his mercy as even cries out to
I think I'm going to do this a little bit differently from how I normally do it. Every time I'm up here and have to pray, I dread it. Like, really, I get nervous. It's just burdensome. And I always try to do this properly. Like, how everyone else does it, trying to fit into some mold I don't usually fit into. And I was thinking about this last night after the Chosen fundraiser. And this word came to me, and I want to share it with you all and pray it over you, this idea of having a burden of joy. And so um, I want to read Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find 
rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This has been a verse that's been at the center of many of my testimonies. This idea that Jesus gives us a yoke that is light and easy, and if we are to be the body of Christ, then we should share everyone else's burdens with ourselves. And so I want to pray for you all, because I'm so thankful for the people who I minister together with, the people I minister to, and just the friends who have been with me for the past 20 some years at this point. And I just want to pray that you all also have people you can minister to, people you can minister together with, people who will stick with you for your entire life. And so as VBS comes up, Chosen Missions comes up, there's so much we can do to serve these children. We can share the burden, and as and I pray that every child who comes in through these doors for VBS, every person we encounter in Connecticut on the missions field, every person we encounter in our own lives, that we can be an example of who, who God is. And we, and every encounter, we show them just how amazing he is. And with, and that we be the example of, of what God wants us to be. That we are every if. God is all we need, and that we should be everything that God wants us to be. Because what else can we do? It is a burden of joy. And so I pray this for you. I pray that you have burdens of joy. I pray for VBS next week that we do an amazing job. Every child learns more about God. I pray for the generous magnanimous giving hearts for the fundraiser. And I just pray that over Pastor Q as he gave us the word, and that he be with, that God is with them with every word he speaks. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, good afternoon. And it's really humid outside crazy human. But we are inside and filled with joy to be here together. So welcome everyone to um, Hope Church House of Prayer for everyone. Just a few announcements. First one is we've been announcing this for a while. It's the Men of Hope uh, men's group of our church. They are doing their um, golf tournament. And I believe people, is it too late to sign up, Reggie? It's not too late, so if you're on the fence about it, considering it, thinking about it, then um, talk to Reggie and he will push you over the edge. So that, not over the edge, but push you to the other side of the fence to say yes, that you want to come. And again, it's not about how well you golf, but it's really about the fellowship. It's really about hanging out with the guys. What, when, you know, what other times can you get together with the men of hope and do that without the women around? So uh, talk to Reggie. You can still sign up. The date has been set, though. It's July 24th, so that's next Monday. Talk, talk to him for more details. Our next announcement is going to be given by, come on up, it's Chloe and Ian. Oh, it's about the fundraiser today. Good afternoon, Hope Church. So this year we've been granted the opportunity to be able to go on this year's chosen missions trip to New Haven, Connecticut, where we're going to work with Pastor Lenny and his wife, Pastor Brittany, and their ministry, Kings Keep. And there we hope to spread the good word in the community and lead people to Christ. Hello, so I'm here to talk about the bake sale fundraiser for the missions trip Chloe just mentioned. And this is some of the items that we are going to give you are the chocolate cornerstone cookies, the kingdom crispies, and the restoration refreshers. We also have two loaves, one fish, which is our tuna sandwich, and gobble the gospel turkey sandwiches. So this is a fundraiser, so we do welcome any and all donations that you give, but I do want to emphasize that this is purely donations. The food in the back is not paid for, so you can take, you can go up and take whatever you want, but 
But this is funding the missions trip, so we would like any donations possible. Thank you. Thank you, guys. That's Ian and Chloe, two of those who are going. Um, let me see who else is going. Who, who, what's the total team? It's, I know Isaiah's going, right? Isaiah Brewington. And those who are wearing shirts. Everybody who's wearing a shirt, stand up for a sec. Stand up for a sec. These are the guys who are going. So keep them in prayer. It's the last week of July. I believe it's Zachariah. There's Ann Quinlan, Pastor Jason. Uh, who else is it? Emily. Oh, Efren's going. He doesn't have a shirt on, but Miss Rachel's going. Isaiah, Emma, Maddie, and uh, oh, we already saw Chloe and Danielle. Is that everyone? I got Zachariah. Who else? Caroline, Caroline Koo, who's uh, out, of, out of the country right now. So that's the team. We'll be praying for you guys. Thank you. Give generously. This is their only one fundraiser. So there's not another fundraiser, second, third, fourth opportunity or anything like that. This is, this is it, the one time that you're able to give. And they didn't mention it, but it, you can give by cash. There will be a cash donation box back there. But I know these days we don't carry a lot of cash. So you're able to give using the Church Center app. So in the same way that you give your tithes and missions offerings and Thanksgiving offerings, you should have a drop-down menu selection, a choice that says chosen missions. Correct? Yes? So there is an option that says chosen fundraiser or chosen mission, something like that. So choose that option. Is this fundraiser? Okay, specifically it says chosen fundraiser. So choose that option and donate. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you. We announced this last week. This is something new. Through our house churches that we've been doing, we have something called the RJM. It's the Receiving Jesus Meeting. Receiving Jesus Meeting are for our VIPs who come through our house churches and who want to know more about the gospel, the good news, salvation, and about our Jesus. And so we have these meetings. We're scheduling them about once every two months or as needed, normally on the second Sunday of each month. So today will be our first one. So if I could just ask the entire congregation, the whole body of Hope Church, to be praying for these things called RJM. It's for people to come and really be able to receive Jesus. So that's happening today. VBS, as Ephraim prayed, it's finally here. I know we've been announcing it for months and months. It's finally here. It's happening next week all next week, Monday through Friday, every evening. We've got a whole kitchen crew providing dinner, not only for the kids who are registered. Where's Helen? Helen is our person director of VBS. How many do we have registered kids? 90 kids, and how many volunteers? Sixty volunteers, so that's 90 kids, 60 volunteers that we are feeding and going to be praying for. That's awesome, you guys. 60 volunteers, that's all of you right here. That's everyone here. So because of that, just want to give you a heads up. As you know, during the week of VBS, because we're all going to be here, we're not having HOP, our Wednesday night prayer, and we're not having house church meetings, which is huge because, you know, we never cancel a house church except for something really, really important. And so VBS, no house church, no HOP, Wednesday or Friday, because you all are going to be here doing VBS. So thank you, you guys. We're praying for that. Also, so you know how different house churches have been volunteering for each month to provide the hospitality refreshments um, for the Sunday fellowship food. I believe for the summer months, um, we are having those who are maybe not involved in or not in a house church yet and just various ones uh, signing up to provide the hospitality refreshments. Our director of that is Elder Hyun Ju. So you might have gotten an email or even if you didn't, if you would like to celebrate someone's birthday, anniversary, promotion, or just just because you love this congregation and you would like to um, volunteer to provide the refreshment on a particular Sunday, please see Elder Hyunju, and we would love to get you signed up for that. All right. At this time, we will continue to worship through our giving, and so we have an offering basket up here as well as using your church center apps.
Anyone else? All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, God in heaven, for your goodness and faithfulness to us. Lord, during this time of giving, we give to you our finances, Lord. We give you our worship. Father, we thank you for all the, the things that you have blessed us with, and we come before you, God, to bless your name. We lift up our missions uh, partner for this month for Judy, who is in South Asia, as we met and heard from her, God, during last Wednesday's HOP. Father, would you bless her and the work that she, was, she is doing, Lord, and Father, there's just a ministry that she is involved with. Father, we just thank you and lift up to you all those, Lord, who are continuing to uh, serve you in various ways. As we, as uh, Ephraim mentioned, Lord, with a youth mission trip with VBS, God, 60-plus volunteers for your kingdom and for your children, God, that we give our all. And we also lift up prayers for those who are hurting among us, Father, those who may be suffering either in financial crisis or um, emotional distress, physical challenges, Lord, or in pain um, with disease and illness. Father, we pray, God, for your hand to be upon them. Would you come and would you um, heal them? Would you comfort them? So we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, at this time, before Pastor Q comes up to give us the, oh, the kids, you may be dismissed. So, yes, hope kids, jam. Y'all may leave. <laughs> all right, all the kids are exiting. As I was saying, before Pastor Q comes up to give us the word, uh, we have a special treat. Uh, one of our missions partner, he's, he, he and his wife, uh, Dustin and Holly, are not the featured uh, mission partners for the month, but they happen to be in town, and so we've invited them to come and share with us and give us a brief update of what they've been up to and what's going on with them. So we invite the gardeners to come on up. Thank you so much. It is so wonderful to be here with all of you. Such a blessing just to be with a group of people who exalt the name of Jesus above everything else. Um, yeah, we've really missed just seeing all of your friendly faces and getting to visit with you all. Last time we saw you, I think, was October, and we've actually been uh, just really... <sighs> The Lord has given us a, an amazing ministry assignment in Kansas City that we were very occupied with the last few months. So that's why we haven't seen you for a while, but it's just great to be here with you. So um, after our last trip here, when we visited, uh, 111 asked us to lead the School of Missions, which is a pioneering school to raise up gospel messengers to be sent out from Kansas City to the ends of the earth. And so Dustin and I had the privilege of leading this school. We had seven interns that we were teaching and training, and we had just had the honor of graduating them a week or so ago. Um, and so on a personal note, we also um, moved into a new place, a new home. We were in a, a one-bedroom apartment um, and really just felt it on our hearts to, that the Lord was needing to get, like we needed more space basically just because we wanted to host people and and have worship meetings in our home and the, the space that we had just wasn't quite big enough so uh, we actually moved into a, a little basement apartment while we were waiting on the home to open up and so it's been such a blessing now that we're there and we're really grateful for all that God has has done in our lives as well personally oh and we also celebrated our first year anniversary which was amazing that that a year has already gone by so anyway I'm gonna let Dustin share a little bit more Yes, yes, just celebrated a year, and you may have noticed a lack of a certain type of announcement, <laughs> and there's, there's no more, there's not another announcement right now, so enjoying marriage, enjoying ministry, getting established, congratulations, Pastor Jason and Hannah, I think I saw Jason, but we're super thrilled for you guys, we're not quite there yet, but yeah, just really have been putting our, our time, our efforts, and our energy into pioneering the School of Missions with 111 Global 
uh, just graduated our interns, and we've really uh, have felt a particular pull as far as where to focus our efforts just on the kind of the second half of the Great Commission, uh, the first half being, of course, like the go, sending people. We've, we've, we've done that both for over a decade now, but also the teach them to obey all my commands and to follow them is where we're really feeling a, a particular focus. Uh, and so that's what we do in Kansas City and specifically with the School of Missions. Uh, we've just been alongside teaching, raising them up, uh, giving practical worship and prayer skills so they can go out and they can establish hubs in every tribe, every nation, and every tongue. And so specifically, we've got three of our students are planning to join our staff in Kansas City in the next couple months, but we're also sending out a couple to the Philippines, uh, Nick and Rebecca, who've been in Kansas City with us the last couple of years, and they're going to pioneer a YWAM base there. So we love Kansas City, uh, and we love being in the nations, but we really love uh, just empowering people. And to get to do that, our first major ministry assignment as a couple, we're just so grateful for all your prayers and, and support and meals. And yeah, we just always feel so loved when we come here. So we really appreciate you, Pastor Q, Pastor Mimi, sown so much into my, my life over, I think, 10 years. I think this is uh, the 10th year of me calling Hope my home. So to get to do it with my wife is amazing. We love being here. Um, yeah, and so next couple of weeks, we've been given some personal time off. So we're just going to be kind of resting, praying, processing through. We're visiting my parents because we haven't had a chance to see them all year. Um, and then we'll be back in Kansas City in a few weeks, um, and we'll be talking through what we're going to do for the, the next school of missions. One uh, Eleven is actually going to run a DTS. For those of you who are familiar with YWAM, we'll be pioneering that in January. So we're praying through what our role could look like in that. Um, yeah, so we really appreciate prayer, appreciate being a uh, part of a church that's a house of prayer for everyone. That's not a normal thing, but we really believe it's going to be uh, on earth and, and in heaven as well. So we're really thankful for you guys. Uh, yeah, you guys can just be praying for that, and yeah, we love you guys. Let's all stretch out our hands, and let's just bless them. Pete, you can come up too, and let's just pray for them. Father, we thank you so much, Lord, as we have just been privileged, God, to hear a report from these two, God, whom you love, whom you call friends, God. Father, we thank you for the ministry that you have called them to, the ministry that they are putting their all into, Lord. We thank you that you have called them to Kansas City, the work that they're doing as they're leading and teaching and training up, Lord, as we hear that interns have graduated. Lord, not only are they going and just um, going forth but and sending, but they are also teaching and discipling people. So, Father, would you use every giftings that is upon both of them? Would you even increase their giftings, Lord, that they would use it for your kingdom's purposes, Lord? So, Father, we thank you again for the home that you've given them with more space that they may host. Father, we pray for future children for them, Lord, um, that the next time they come that they may be able to announce those, that good news to us. Father, we thank you that your hand is upon them in everything that they do. Would you bless them richly and Hope Church is thankful to partner with them. So we love you and we thank you. Pray this all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, you guys. Did you notice that Pastor Mimi prayed children? Not one child, but children. We believe in growing the kingdom in every different way possible. God is good. Uh, on the way to church, I realized I forgot to bring my glasses. I cannot see you. I sort of see blur, you know, blurry out there. So today we are in, still in Gospel of Luke, and today the messenger God has given me to share with us really something that I have not been really sharing a lot lately. 
And I, I, I'll be very honest. I have not, this is one of the areas that I have not preached a lot on. We have a Bible study. We're building place on the end times, but we haven't done it, on, especially on the end times. We're going to read, we're going to look at Luke chapter 12, verse 35 to 48. If you'll stand, let's read the word of God. It'll be in ESP on the screen. You can follow along with that. Luke chapter 12. Stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning and be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline and at table, and he will come and serve them. Wow. If he, comes, if he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. Verse 38, how blessed they will be if their master comes in the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them awake. Verse 39, but know this, that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. Verse 40, you also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect Peter said, Lord, are you telling this parable for us or for all? And the Lord said, who then is the faithful and wise manager whom his master will set upon over his household to give them their portion of food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if the servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the male and female servants and eat and drink and get drunk, oh my, the master of the servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he does not know and will cut him in pieces and put him with the unfaithful. And that servant who knew his master's will but did not get ready or act according to his will will receive a severe beating. But the one who did not know and did, and did what deserves a beating will receive a light beating. Everyone to whom much was given of him, much will be required. And from him to whom they entrusted much, they will demand the more. Here ends the word of God, and God's people say, thanks be to God. You may be seated. There are a lot of, um, one of the things that Christians throughout the centuries all over the world believed in, we believed in what is and was the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. How he will come, in what way? They may we have, some, have some differences on how we look at it, but one thing we are sure is that he is coming back. Just as he has came first time, he will come back for sure for the second time. This all agree. Even in the Apostles' Creed, we confess together, says we believe that he will return to judge the living and the dead. We believe this. Yet, somehow, I, we have not, we often neglect it, to not think about it, and we live as if he is not coming back. Let me pray once. Father, we just come right now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our King, our Lord, our God, you are coming back again. Our Lord, our God, we just come right now. We ask that as we come to you, you speak to us. You let your word be alive in us. Show us your ways. Meet with us here. We want to see your face. We love you, God. I pray for brevity, yet clarity in your word. We ask your anointing. We ask your inspiration. We ask your touch in our lives. We commit this time to you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. I did pray for brevity. 
as well as clarity. And Jesus, in, in Luke chapter 12, Jesus has been speaking to the followers after he had encountered with the Pharisees. He had been giving the warnings, preparing them how to follow him in, 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 as a followers of Christ. He told them to be aware of hypocrisy of Pharisees. He told them to be, uh, to not fear what man can do to them, but fear what, fear God alone. He told them not to be worried about, you know, you know, not to be aware of all forms of greed. And he told them not to worry about what you will eat or drink, but instead, you know, put your treasures in heaven and, and end it by saying, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Now he continues on and really tells them about, you know, and really talks, tells them about to be prepared for his second coming. In verse 35, he says, stay dressed for action. Actually, this is sort of, we're trying to make in our sense, in our sending, in our, in our way, it literally says, gird at your loins about. In those days, men would have long, almost dressed type of the thing. And to, to go run, to, to, be, to be doing something, they really have to gird up their loins and really stuck it into the belt. It's like, you know, I think in India, whatever, a lot of men have kulta with a long thing. And to run, you have to, you have to pull it up. You have to gird it so that you're able to move fast. So this is what he's saying. Be, be dressed for action and keep your lamps burning. I remember, some of you may not know this. There was a motel that had an announcement. We'll leave the light on for you. Remember the motel? Motel 6. This is, you know, it says Jim Baudet saying, and, and, and the, you know, how many of you remember that? Yeah, maybe about five of us remember that commercial. This is Jim Baudet saying, we'll leave the light on for you. And, you know, you know, you know who, who goes to Motel 8, Motel 6, but anyhow. But, you know, it was, I remember that saying. It says, keep, you know, keep the lamps burning. And that Jesus gives them an imagery. It's like a man and the servants are waiting for the master to come back. And so you go, be awake, be ready. You know, when the master comes, there, you be ready to meet the, um, and open the door for the master. You know, you remember that when he said, keep the, keep the light lamp burning, reminds me of the parable Jesus gave about end times. About ten virgins. Remember the story Jesus gave about ten virgins? Five are wise, five are, you know, not foolish. You know, and the wise had extra oil for their lamp. You know, I remember the older uh, children's songs used to sing, keep your oil, in the, in the, keep, uh, give me oil in my lamp. That's right, thank you, thank you. you all your older people remember this, give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning, burning. And anyway, so that, that, that story, and so the wise virgins had extra oil for the lamp. The foolish didn't have extra lamp. You know that's in the story, the wise knew when the master was coming, right? When the groom was coming, right? Of course not. They didn't know. They were not wise because they knew when the bridegroom was coming. They were wise because even though they didn't know, just like everybody else, they were ready with extra oil, with the lamp burning. When the, the bride come, the groom comes, they're ready to meet the groom. You know, and so the Bible talks about the Matthew chapter I, I, oh, I'm sorry, I put the wrong uh, uh, slide in the uh, thing. I put in the thing, this in PQ slides, I put it in there with the extra notes in there. Forget the, the, the things with the PQ on it, do not, do not show that, okay? That's, that's for me only. I put little things on it, okay. Matthew 25, verse 1, it says, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamp and went to meet the bridegroom. Then, and, 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 all the, and those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. It talks about that. Now, in, in, that, in the verse we read, it talks about how when the master comes, they will open the door at once. They're ready. Now, let me stop you at this. And I'm, I have a, you know, you know, a lot of things trigger in me, some stories. In a, in some events in my life, and I don't even had a moment like that. I remember when he talked about opening the door at once. When I was a little kid, you know, I remember my father, you know, was a, a great man, but uh, when he had, had extra drinks, 
you know, he was a little bit of had temper. I remember one day he came home. I must have fallen asleep. I was sleeping. He was knocking on the door for a long time. And I barely knocked and knocked, and I didn't hear it for a long time. And I must have been, I don't know how long he knocked. And I came down and opened the door. He was so mad, so mad. And I got, I, I don't know, I got slept so hard. Anyway, bad, bad, bad memory. Sorry, forget, forget about the memory. Anyhow, open the, when, when the master comes, open the door the, at once. And then he goes on to say, blessed are those. And blessed who are the blessed people, blessed are those servants. When the master comes, they'll find them awake already, watching. And they were not sleeping. They found them awake, you know, wait, waiting for the master. And then Jesus says something very interesting, something that I, would, I wouldn't expect. He says, and when, when, when the master comes, he's so excited, so happy that he will cut himself, he will, he will serve the servants. You know, I, I didn't see that before. It's interesting how he says, and he is not just a master, but he is something very interesting, very interesting here. And if he, he'll dress himself for service and have them recline at the table, and he will come and serve them. You know, recently, my daughter, Abby, got married. You know, I didn't get to talk about it a lot last week because I didn't preach it last week. You know, and, you know, and when you're waiting, the first wedding that I stayed long, most weddings I go, all the weddings I've gone, I usually eat and run. I don't stick around. I don't stick around for people dancing. I don't stick around for anything because I don't want to see anything. And I say, because I, I don't know what I will see. So I eat and go, and I don't even see the cake cut. But because it's my daughter's wedding, I stay till the end. I saw some of our people having fun like never before. <laughs> never before. Oh, I didn't know they could move like that. Oh, my goodness. But the thing, point, point of the thing was, you know, because waiting ended late, right? And people are going home late, and they're driving late. It was pouring too. You know, and you, know, you wonder, I, because, I, because I'm, I'm a father of the bride, I stayed in the hotel, I stayed there. But a lot of people had to drive home at least an hour, hour and a half. You know, think about driving home, you know, and I'm wondering, did they all make it okay at home? So this... The, the, the power stooges tells us a master went to a wedding. He, in the evening, he's coming back. They know he's going to come back. You know, they do not know when he's coming back. When he comes back, will they, will they should be ready, open the door, and serve him. That's, that was their role. But they do not know which time they're coming. It says second hour, third hour. It says actually under the verse, ISP says, how blessed are they will be if the master comes in the middle of the night. Oh, near dawn. Second watch or third watch is that. Oh, no, the, the second watch is between midnight to three, three o'clock. And, and the third watch is in, and, and from three to six, six a.m. Late at night. Even, even if it comes that almost at dawn, you need to be ready. You need to be ready. And when the master finds you in that way, how blessed are you. See, the, forget, the, do, not show this, do not show the slides with the PQ on it. Pass that thing, okay? Do not show that. That's for me, okay? Sorry. I, I, you know, I have different sets of slides, and I apparently loaded the wrong one. This has like 60 slides in it. My other slides only have 40-something. Anyhow. Okay. okay, now, then Jesus goes on to say, if you had known the hour, and Jesus says, you know, and said, if you have known when the thief is coming, you will not let them break into your house. Right? You will not let them break into your house. Verse 39, but know this, if, if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. Right? Think about it. If you know somebody gives you a tip, there is a thief coming to your house at 2 a.m. tomorrow, you're going, to, you, you're going to prepare, you're going to get called the police or something, you get everything ready so that they will not break into your house. If you had known when they were coming, you know, you prepare for it. Let me just stop here. This is not in my notes, but, you know, it's, we are, we are talking, uh, talk, thinking about waiting for the coming of the Lord. 
you know, and we were becoming of the Lord many different, at least two different ways. One is, I may die and go see the Lord. It may matter as a God may come in our time when I'm alive. Either way, we're going to meet the Lord. You know, as you, you know, this is almost 10 years ago, Pastor Mimi and I both, both of us lost our fathers. Apparently, my father passed away, you know, and, and you know, I, I got a call, and I think it was a Thursday in you know, an afternoon, and my mom called from Hawaii saying, your father had an accident. And then, and then she hung up. What, what? And then, and then I called her, she doesn't, and then she probably comes and she's in the hospital because apparently he fell in the water. But my father, excellent swimmer. He was, uh, he used to work on a ship that went out, you know, the catching tuna fish and all kind of thing. He was a good swimmer. And I don't know how, and, 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 and so that night, I took a flight out to Hawaii to see what happened. My father passed away. And apparently he fell into the water and, and he was 77. Not quite 77. And went to see, when I went to see him, when I went to see my mom, and after my father passed, when I went, and that morning, apparently that morning, he went to morning prayer, as he usually does. At, at about 5 o'clock, he goes to morning prayer. And he'll come home. For about an hour, he'll write the Bible. For about an hour before he goes to work. So when I went to see, when I see, see mom, I saw everything exactly as he left it. I saw the, the, the notebook open where he, he wrote the Bible on and his pen on the side. And my mom told, told me something very interesting, and which, uh, you know, something interesting that I, you know, she thought as if he knew when he was dying. My mom never wrote a check in her whole life because my father did. He always signed the check. But apparently the, the, about a few weeks before he passed away, he got his ch- signature, made a stamp, so my mom can have a stamp he stamped signatures that she can write checks. And he usually pays the bills, all the medical, you know, all the you know, utility bills end of the month, but he had paid middle of the month as if he was getting ready. That year, he interestingly, by himself, traveled all over the country to see his children, including me, my brother or my sisters, and as if he was getting ready. But we didn't know he, he, he would pass away like that. He was a healthy man. See, we do not know when we will die. And, and, and it's, you, you, don't, you do not just die because you're old. We do, not know, we do not know when we will leave this world physically. We, and are we ready? Often we say, I want to be ready. And I want to, see, you know, because I had a stroke eight years ago, in some ways I think about I want to be ready before when I, when I go. If I had a stroke, you know, I could have one of the strokes. So, I think about my life and, and live in that way, being, being prepared. You don't want to be unprepared for things. But more than that, Jesus says, Son of man is coming. Are you ready? You at, he's coming at an hour and day that you do not know. If anybody comes and says, they know when Christ is coming, you can tell them right in the face, you are a liar. You do not know what you're talking about. They're caught. Jesus, the Bible says very clearly, First uh, Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, now concerning the times and the season, brothers, you have, no, you have no need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves are fully aware that the hour of the Lord will, the, of the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. First, Second Peter uh, 3.10, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. And then if Revelation 16.15, Behold, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake, keeping his garments on, that he may not go about naked and be seen exposed. You do not know when he is coming. Therefore, be ready. You live each day as if he's coming that this day. Faithfully, be ready for his coming. You know, when you're in school, one of the things you hate was the surprise test, the pop quizzes that your professor gives you, right? I hate those things. Uh, you know, don't you? I hated that thing. The, the class that I, I liked most was we had a quiz every time we met. This professor, my, my Hebrew t- professor, every time, every lecture we had, we had the quiz, pop quiz, every, every time. That's not a pop quiz because you know you have a quiz every time. Ten questions every time. That counted for our final, final grade. It was, it was good. The worst was when... Then you come into class and your professor says, 
clear the table, put everything away, please. We're having a pop quiz. Oh, my goodness. You hate that thing, right? You know what I'm talking about. One of the things very clear in the Bible, you know, this, I'm, I'm going off the note here. One of the things very clear in the Bible is two things. One, Jesus is coming back sure. Secondly, second thing we know is that we, nobody knows when, not even the Son of Man. No angel, nobody knows when he's coming back. These two things are very, very clear in the Bible. He's coming back for sure. Second, we do not know when he's coming. And why? Because it's good for us not to know. God didn't want us to know when he's coming. He, and this is better for us that God, did, God said, nobody will know, nobody will know when I'm coming and what hour I'm coming. Therefore, the wise person is one who lives as if he's coming soon. Lives with that in light. And says, so verse 40, you must be ready in the unexpected hour. You must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. If you can expect when, that's not the time. It will come when you're not expecting. Look at uh, Matthew 24, 36. But, the, but concerning that hour, day and the hour, no one knows. Not even the angels of heaven. Not even angels. No, not even the Son. But the Father only. Listen. Some of, some of you are too young to see, known this. I remember in about 30, was it 33 years ago, 1990? Was it 1990, I believe. And, and, and people are saying, people, they're called going and say, oh, when you count the, the days, whatever, Jesus is coming this day. And, you know, I remember, I remember that, you know. But it was 1992. In the September, they said Jesus is coming in 1992. I don't know why 1992. But, you know, they, and then some people like literally sold everything, went to the mountains, you know, and, and, and they went on telling people Jesus is coming back and get ready. How many of you remember that? Nobody. I remember that. And, and, and this guy who prophesied that, I mean, it, did it happen? Oh, my calculation, oh, it's one year later. And, and it didn't come that time either. Listen, if anybody said they know that hour, they are wrong. You know they are wrong. But, I want, but, but the thing, on the other extreme is, if you live as if he's not coming back, that's a problem as well. And then verse 41 to 48, Jesus goes into, uh, you know, talks about how do we get ready then. If we, if we do not know, if we know he's coming back, if we do not know when, then how shall we ready? How do we live? This is in my notes, okay? So look at me a little bit. There is a verse I've been praying more than any other passage in the whole Bible. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. It said, Therefore, be careful how you live, not as unwise men, but as wise. How? Making the most of your time because the days are evil. The time you're living in is evil. So no, and to make most of your time, some versions will say, redeem the days, redeem the opportunities. Then he said, do not be so then, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Wisdom is understanding the time you're living in. Wisdom is knowing what, God, what will God has for you in your life and living knowing is time that God has given for you. Look at verse 41. Peter said, Lord, are you telling this parable to, for us or to everybody else? So are you, are you telling all this for us or them? And Jesus actually doesn't say either, I, you know, either way, but he's saying, it's for all for you. Look at verse 42. And Lord said, who then is a faithful and wise manager? And I highlighted some of the words. This is important. Three things are important. How you get ready, how you live ready before God. Faithful, wise manager, whom his master will set over his household to give them their portion of food at the proper time. Verse 42, the Lord answered, who then is a faithful and wise servant? He is the one that his master will put in charge to run the household and give other servants their share of the food at the proper time. So how shall we be ready? It says here, it gives a parable and three words I, I highlight. Number one, manager. He's not just a servant, he's a manager. 
Meaning marriage means it's not, you are managing something that's not yours. It's not yours. It is your master's. You are managing that thing. You have some responsibility and authority to manage his things, to your master's things. Secondly, he said, faithful. You have, you have faithful in what you do. Meaning you have responsibility and duties. His duty was to take care of others, other servants, and, and give them the portion of food that is needed. You manage. Thirdly, third thing was that, you know, and, and the accountability. And a faithful, right? And it says faithful and wise, wise uh, manager because there's accountability involved in it. Accountability is involved in it. And I, I, and I read this already, uh, but you know, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18, it talks about living wisely. And I want to add the last verse, and do not get drunk at wine, for that is dissipation, be, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. How do we get ready? How do we live in this season? Know the times you're living in. Make the most of your time. Know God's will for you. Living according to that. Do not, be, you know, do not waste your time. Do not be in dissipation. But be filled with the Spirit of God. And then goes on to the, who are the blessed servants? They are, you are blessed. And let me stop here. And, you know, and in Revelation, when you read the book of Revelation, it's one book it says, you are blessed if you keep these words. The prophecies about his coming. You are blessed if you keep his words. It says, verse 43, Blessed is a servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. When the master is coming, one of the verses CSB, uh, 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 Christian Standard Bible, blessed is a servant whom the master finds doing his job. He's doing his job. Think about it. Wouldn't it be great? Let's say I'm on a mission trip to, let's say, India and, and doing God's work. And then, in the, and then that day, Jesus shows, Jesus comes back in the middle of doing God's work. And, you know, and said, good job. You know, you know, and that's the thing. You are, you, are, you are found doing what you're supposed to be doing. You know, one of the worst things is that, I don't know if you have your parents like this. Some of you, I know I love you because you're, if you're Asian, you know, your parents will be like this. And the worst thing, you're supposed to study in your, in your room, or studying, right? And you, you know what happened? And chibuling. And your mom walks in and with some from snack. How's the studying going? Not good, right? You know, and the thing is, but when she comes in, she sees you, you're studying. Look at you're studying. Oh, my good son. Wow, good job. More food for you. Blessed is a servant when you are found doing your work. Verse 44, truly I say to you, he will set him over his possessions. And, and you know, when, when you are found faithful, you know, the word is promotion. Greater responsibility and authority. Promotion time. You are found trustworthy. I'll put more things on you to take care of because you are, you are, you are good. And then, but, there's always but, there is foolish servants, foolish one. Okay, look at verse 45. But if that servant says to himself, he's a foolish one, okay, foolish one, okay? Uh, that servant says to himself, master is delayed in coming. He's not coming for a long time. Let's party. And begins to beat the male servant, the female servants, and eat and drink and, and get, you know, get drunk. He is this is the foolish servant. Foolish because he abuses authority, neglects his responsibility, lives for himself, not for his master. He lived as if he has no master. And as he himself is a master, he beats other slaves and or not, you know, and he's just doing whatever he wants as if there's no accounting day coming. The fool, Bible says, fool said in his side, there is no God. This fool says, the master is not coming back for a long time. I'm going to live as if he's not coming back. I'm going to live as if this is my life. I'm going to do whatever I want. Verse 46, the master of the house, of the servant will come on a day when he does not expect him. And at an hour he does not know. And will cut him in pieces. Scary. Cut him in pieces. 
and the next one is even scarier. And put him with the unfaithful. That's even scarier. More than being cut up. Because he says, not only are you judged, but he says, you are counted as unsaved, unfaithful. You know, he was faithful, now he was counted along with unfaithful. This is almost like what even Jesus said in those days. Lord, Lord, did he not say, did he not cast out demons in your name? Jesus said, I never knew you. Similar thing here. Worse thing than being punished. You are considered as not followers of Christ. Considered as not in the kingdom of God. Considered as unfaithful. Now I want you to look at next, uh, next two verses, which is important. And, and, and it's often we don't talk about it. Be, before I go on. Master will come on a day not expected, at an hour not known. Judgment, accounting is coming. He'll be asking, what did you do with all that I've entrusted to you? What did you do with I've given you? What did you do, what did you do with the, the resource I've given to you? What did, what did you do with your relationship I've given you? What did you do with your wife? What did you do with your husband? What did you do with your children? What did you do with the time that I've given you? What did you do with opportunities I've given to you? What did you do with disappointments I've given given to you. I said it. What did you do with the disappointments I allowed in your life? What did you do with those? You'll be all accounted for it. Now the next is, our God is God who has just in punishment. There is, if you look at the next verse, verse it talks about beating. And that servant who knew his master's will but did not get ready or act according to his will will receive a severe beating. But the one who did not know and did what deserves a beating will receive a lighter beating. Okay? There is a punishment coming accordingly. If you knew it, but you still didn't do it, you're going to get bigger punishment. If you didn't know it, you still didn't do it, you still get punished, but maybe not as much. There is a degree of punishment. There's a degree of reward as well as a degree of punishment because according to what you have done, you will be judged. I don't want to be beaten. I don't want to be judged. There's a severe beating, light beating, heavy whipping, and light whipping. In verse 47, he says, to whom it has given more, more will be required of him. And he said, those who are entrusted more, not only given, but he trusted you more things, he required more things from you. Listen. Those in America who have heard the gospel, who have rejected it, will be punished a whole lot more than those who have never heard. They will still be, they will still be punished for not being, in, in the, not being holy before God, but those who know better will be judged more severely. I need to say these things. People talk about God is God of love. Yes, he's God of love. He's also God of justice. Both are true. Finally, everyone to whom much was given, of him much will be required. From him to whom they entrusted much, they will demand the more. A few questions for you. Are you ready? Are you ready for the day? Jesus is coming back. We used to sing old, old song. I don't know how many of you remember. This is like 45-year-old, 43-year-old song. Jesus is coming back to stay. It could be any time of day. Jesus is coming back, I know, for the Holy Spirit told me so. So praise the Lord. We are going to shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's the minute singing along with me, right? <laughs> Pray. Jesus is coming back. You know, let me stop right here. I don't know how often these days in our Western Christian culture, in Western Christianity, we hear that Jesus is coming back. Do we hear Jesus coming back? We live as if he's not coming back. We live as if my life is my own. We live as if I am my own boss. We do not live as if he is the Lord God that he is. He is coming back. He is coming back to judge. 
He'll be coming back to make everything right. Amen. He's coming back. I need to say this. And you know, and you, you know there are 260 chapters in the Bible, New Testament. And there are 318 times the Bible talks about his coming. 318 times. At least one, in, one verse in every chapter. One verse in every 25. Jesus talks about, Bible talks about he's coming back. This is how much we need to know. He is coming back for sure. There will be accountability. There will be judgment. There will be restoration. God is coming back. This is biblical truth. And we need to hear, we need to hear this and know this. We need to live in light of that. Not only that, we saw it in an earlier chapter, earlier passage. You know, the rich man would say, oh, my soul, we have everything ready, relax and rest. The God said, you fool, tonight your soul is demanded of you. We do not know when we will die. We need to be ready for his coming. We need to be ready in our life daily as well. Are you ready? Because he's coming. And one, one, one more thing. Are you awake? Are you awake? St are you staying awake? The day or hour, we, no one knows. Are you staying awake? How do you stay awake? By being faithful, being accountable, living each day as he's coming back. No, living as a manager of all that God has put in our care. Oh, I said this earlier, but Master will come on a day not expected and an hour not known. He will be asking, what did you do with all that I've entrusted to you? Time, resources, all that I've entrusted to, what did you do with it? Because Bible says in Hebrew 9.27, do not show that verse. And in as much as it is appointed for man to die once, and after this comes judgment. Our death is sure. The judgment is sure. And as a child of God, we do not live afraid. No, we don't. We are not afraid of his coming. I'm excited about God coming back. But I need to live in light of his coming. If you do not know God, you should be fearful. If you do not know God, you should be Dreading that he's, he'll come back. You know, like if you didn't study for your exam, you didn't study for exam and you have to walk into exam, come on. How scary will it be? If you're ready, if you're ready, doesn't matter what pop quiz, you are, you are ready. I, I can handle it. Praise him, come. I'll tell you that one of the most horrible stories in that. Experience I have happened in my life. And, and please don't do this, okay? When I was in college, I remember I, I wasn't, when I, this is when I was studying electrical engineering, I was good in math. And I, I think it was calculus three or four. I didn't know there was calculus. There was calculus one, two, three, four in our school. I think, it was, I think calculus four, I, think, I believe I was, my average was 97 that, 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 that semester, doing well, you know, and uh, in the, those are days I was take, you know, no dose. I don't know if you know. Does anybody know what no dose is? Captain pills you pop in your mouth so that you, you don't fall asleep. Nobody knows know those? Come on, come on. Say, don't lie. It's like, you know, the, you know those uh, you know, the energy drinks you drink? It's like, no those. I, I, drink, I was studying all night to know those. And, and I, went, I, went, I went about 50 minutes early to take my exam, my, my, this math exam. And then I must have been crazy. I don't know what happened. I thought I went 50 minutes early. I actually went. 45 minutes late. People were wrapping up the exam. I walked in late. I was so shocked. I was so in a, totally shocked, right? I'm, and, and, and my professor, he was like, nice to me, okay, come to my office. I'll let you take the exam in my office. I followed him into the office. I sat down. You know what happened? I blanked out. Because I was so distraught that I missed the exam. And, you know, when I was sitting in front of him, I blanked out. And I turned, not, I couldn't, I remember it was about logarithm. But I don't remember nothing. Put a bad zero. And, and this is the only exam they didn't have to retake. Every other exam, they, people did so bad, they had to retake. This is the only one they didn't have to retake. My, my average went from A 
plus two, C. And that semester I ended up with C in the class in math. Ne never heard of in my life. Anyhow, be ready. Be ready. Not, you don't have to do anything new. Be ready means be faithful. Live in light of his coming. I live daily with his, his coming. I live daily ready for his coming. If I know tomorrow I'm going to die, I'm going to live differently. I'm going to make sure I'm going to forgive any, everyone I need to forgive. I'll reconcile anyone I need to for, reconcile. If there's any debt I need to pay, I'll work it out. If I know if I'm dying tomorrow, if I tomorrow if I go to uh, if I'm the judge, I need to make sure I'm take care of my life now. You live daily as if he's coming tomorrow, tonight, today. Yet you live as if he's gonna come a thousand years later. You do both at one time. Live faithfully living my life before God in light of him and as a good manager, good steward, giving him glory. Amen. Let's social now. Let's praise God together.
is coming. Just as he came first time as God prophesied, he'll come assuredly just as he had said he'll come. Like a thief in the night will come. An hour, a day that we do not expect. But yet we are called to be faithful, waiting upon him. We will not, take, we will not be taken off God. We will be ready for him, faithful, delighting in him, walking in his grace. When he come, he will say, my good and faithful servant, you have done well. Father, we love you, we honor you. You are Lord of all. You are God of mercy and grace. But yet, God, you are God who will make all things right in your time. We worship you, we give you glory, God. We honor you. We look for the day when you'll come and make all things right. When you'll return with shouts of glory, Father God, unjust will be judged. Just will be sitting with you, God. Father, we give you glory. We look to you, God. We thank you. We love you, Lord Jesus. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God the Father, and the communion and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit of God be upon all those who wait for his coming. Be, up, be upon our church from now until forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen.